check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Afternoon, everyone. Hey, hope you've had a great weekend. Um, it's been an amazing weekend. We've had Anzac Day where we celebrate, remember, and honor those who have um, not just sacrificed their life, but who have chosen to be part of the Australian Armed Forces and the New Zealand Armed Forces, uh, protecting us, uh, providing our way of life and our freedom. So that was, a, that was pretty special. I just wanted to follow up on a thought I had the other day. You'll see one of my other Facebook Live posts where I talked about going fishing and I spoke about my pop and, you know, I was the only grandson, so Pop and I were always really, really close, had a, had a fantastic relationship. His background was he was in the Air Force, um, which is really special. He also, once he got out of the Air Force, he joined the police force. And he spent many years in the police force. And uh, years later, when he passed away a few years ago now, um, I remember the police coming and providing an honor guard because he was so well respected and, and thought of uh, in the police force. He also enjoyed bikes. Uh, his time in the police force, he rode bikes in 1960s. He was in charge of the protection for the Queen Elizabeth when she came over. So really cool, really cool history there. And you know, the other day I was talking about going fishing with him and the fun we had in his boat, uh, the fun we had with crab traps and losing them overboard and the crab traps not being, not being secured, probably not being tied on. And um, I remember a job I had years ago uh, to working for a tourism mob it was a lot of fun, but I actually punctured my lung. And before you say it, no, it was not a motorcycle accident. It wasn't anything like that. I was sitting on my desk and got some pains in my chest. So yeah, that office work, that will kill you. So be careful if you're, if you're an office worker or confined to an office, be careful. So anyway, I drove myself to the hospital and um, much to much to Sal's disgust and my doctor when I got there and collapsed. And I can remember hearing this commotion uh, on the third, second or third day I was in hospital and I could hear this, this voice of this older gentleman and all I heard was him say this, I don't care what time visiting hours are, that's my number one grandson in there and I'm going in. And sure enough it was my pop and he come to see me and cheer me up and brought me some bike magazines and, and we talked and that and you know it was only a matter of probably a month after that that I rode round one day to visit him. Uh, he met me with the all uh, familiar, you know, he'd meet me at the front door of his little apartment, he'd say, ah, oh, on your bike, are you? I could hear you coming a block away. He'd say, that's how it should be. Um, so when we were talking, uh, one of the things that Pop brought up was, um, he was in the Masonic Lodge and he was never one to really talk about faith or God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit or salvation or grace or mercy or forgiveness. He didn't want to ever talk about any of these topics. And uh, he brought up a thing. He said, you know, one of the things that I've really regretted, that I regret in my life, is I haven't had this connection like what you have with your mum and dad and, and through church and through your faith and through your belief. And I kind of picked up on that and we had a bit of a conversation around that, around what a faith journey was, around what relationship is. And, um, it was soon after that, that he had a turn, he was in the hospital, and I went to see him, um, same hospital that I was in only a few months earlier. So we went to see him, and uh, I took him a book. Uh, this is a great book, by the way, if you've got someone, a friend, that is searching or seeking, and they're not really sure about their faith. Um, it's called More Than a Carpenter, and it really describes Jesus and who he is and, and, and what he did and what he can do and the relationship we can have for him. And so I gave that, um, gave that book to my pop and said, look, pop, I'm not trying to push anything on you, but I just want to follow up on the conversation we had regarding faith and your sense of regret and not being connected. So I said, um, so here's the book. So I gave him the book. I went and saw him the next day, and to my surprise, my absolute surprise, he'd read the entire book overnight. And I saw the book and it was folded down, you know, like where you, you don't have a bookmark and you're reading and you're, you unfold the book and you place it down on the table so it keeps the spot where you're up to. And I noticed it and, it, and Pop saw me look at it and he said, oh yeah, by the way, I read that book. I said, oh right. And he goes, yeah, and I did the prayer thing in the back. And I said, the prayer thing? And he said, yeah, the thing where you accept Jesus. 
So I now understand the forgiveness that I can experience through him. I can now understand a God that really loves me. And it was just such an incredible uh, moment for a grandfather and grandson. Um, you know, he passed away shortly after that. He was back home and, and um, it was actually the weekend that we moved to this beautiful spot where we live now. Um, I can remember Pop only a week before he passed away going and getting retested for his license. And he said, the main thing is I want him to be able to get to my grandson. So the doc sort of had to work out, you know, how many kilometers he could drive. And so, um, you know, he got that connected. And the, I guess the powerful thing is that my pop was a pretty hard sort of guy. I think the Air Force and the police force had made him um, a pretty hard and tough sort of character. He had a pretty hard heart. At the same time, during his retirement years, he really became a lot more uh, compassionate and really, in a lot of ways, uh, really opened up um, to lots of things. And you know, towards the end of his life, really opened up to God. So I guess, you know, I want to encourage you, if you've got friends or families that are seeking or seen that they're tough or hard, and they're not interested in the gospel, and they're not interested in the message of Jesus, I want to encourage, keep praying for them, look for opportunities to share. It's not about pushing, it's not about Bible bashing, it, it is about being who you are, knowing whose you are as a son and daughter of God and being real with people and allowing them to encounter God's great and his unending love and his incredible passion for them. Let them encounter, let them discover that there is a heavenly, a loving heavenly father that has his arms out wide for each person. So have a great week ahead. I pray that like Jesus, you'd know the truth of that scripture where Jesus says, come follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. Fishing for people, as I said the other day, it's about your life speaking to those around you. So have a fantastic week. I pray that, um, that you know, for all those that you know in your sphere of influence, your friends, your neighbours, your work colleagues, those that you know that don't know the Lord, um, I pray that you have open doors this week, that the Holy Spirit engineers situations where you're able to speak words of life and love, where you're able to uplift where you're able to encourage, where you're able to spur one another on, uh, spur one another into action, and that people in your world will move even just one step closer to a loving God. So bless your heaps. Thanks for tuning in. Um, feel free to share this with anyone you like. It's another great day here at Stockton Beach. So blessings, guys. Hey, hey, hey.